Hey YouTube, this is Doug Green Cabby, and today we're going to be making biodiesel glycerin soap. Right now we're going to be using our sodium hydroxide reacted uh, glycerin and we did our sap test and it's a sap between 32 and 33 and that's how many milliliters of caustic it took to actually fully saponify it. When you're uh, doing biodiesel glycerin soap you want to make sure that your biodiesel glycerin is 100% uh, fully saponified uh, to make sure that any remnants of biodiesel are out uh, as well as any other kind of contaminants uh, that would not want to be in the final soap that are not fully saponified. So. Uh, we're going to go and pop off our lid and in this recipe that we're doing, we're going to go ahead and pull out 52 ounces of biodiesel glycerin. We're also going to mix in 8 ounces of coconut oil, 15 ounces of stearic acid, and 4 ounces of myristic acid. Now stearic acid and myristic acid are the two easiest fatty acids to be able to find and when making biodiesel glycerin, you are going to want to use fatty acids and that is one going to lighten it naturally it's also going to make a harder bar of soap because biodiesel glycerin soap is naturally really really soft for our recipe uh, we have 79 total ounces of pre soap making products and so we're gonna do a 5% super fatting so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add shea butter and coconut oil in the super fatting process which means that you add the oils at the end to get the moisturizing effects for your skin and uh, with that 5% you take 79 times 0 0.05 and that's going to give you 3.95 ounces and that's what we're going to add. So we're going to add 3 ounces of coconut oil uh, at the very end when the hot process is done and 0.95 ounces of shea butter. So we're going to go ahead and knead 52 ounces of this and as you see here there's a little pool of water on top and the reason that is is because the glycerin uh, loves water and it actually attracts water from the air. So you want to make sure that you have an airtight container so that your uh, biodiesel glycerin doesn't get completely filled with water which would suck. And as you see it is already pretty firm just being the glycerin by itself and that's because it was reacted with sodium hydroxide. And you want to do everything by weights. And so right there we got 10.2 ounces. We need 52 ounces. Once we have that, we'll come right on back. Now this recipe we're making today calls for 8 ounces of coconut oil. Now the reason that we are adding the coconut oil with the biodiesel glycerin is uh, because we want to add a little bit more of the bubbling uh, sudsy qualities uh, that the stearic acid and the myristic acid are not going to add. Now we found that you can make a good solid bar of soap with just the stearic acid and just the myristic acid, but when you add a 10% uh, coefficient of the coconut to the total recipe, uh, it actually aids in being able to uh, moisturize the skin and conditioning the skin as well as gives you bigger suds, longer lasting suds, and more consistent suds, uh, which is going to give you a little bit more feel like uh, you know a store-bought soap. But the great thing about biodiesel glycerin soap is since the glycerin content is so high, when you wash your hands, they're going to be smooth because it has a protective layer that actually keeps the moisture in your skin, which is awesome. We're going to go ahead and melt this along with our pre-measured fatty acids. And on our fatty acids, we have the 15 ounces of stearic acid and the 4 ounces of myristic acid. And so what we're going to do is, as this starts melting down, uh, we're going to go ahead and add these. Now, very, very important, while making this, you want to make sure that you keep the temperature between 170 and 180 degrees. If you get it on the stovetop above that and say you hit the 200 degree mark, if you add in your sodium hydroxide, your caustic solution, you're going to have a huge volcano effect and it will spray all over the place and it will actually burn your contents. You want to keep this at a steady temperature and the way that we do that is we use our point and shoot uh, infrared thermometer and basically what we do is through the process we'll scan it and see what the temperature is inside and you want to keep it at a constant 170 to 180 degrees and you want to make sure that you are watching the stove temperature so if you need to turn it down uh, if it starts to have a huge rise you just want to take it off so that it doesn't boil over I can tell you that uh, having the volcano effect is not fun 
Um, I actually got a little bit of a lie burn on my skin. Just clearing up now. Definitely watch the temperature. Very, very, very important. Now during this melting process, this is going to take about four to five minutes, you're going to want to make sure that you have your hand blender close. Uh, the hand blender you're going to use continuously through the whole process uh, to make sure that you can get uh, enough oxygen bubbles in there as well as to speed up the saponification. Now when we make our lye water, we're also going to add sodium lactate. This is the sodium lactate here and uh, we're going to add uh, two point three seven ounces of sodium lactate the thing that this uh, really does a good job of is one hardening up the soap once it sets uh, which with biodiesel glycerin you want to make your bar as hard as possible also um, it's going to make it very pourable when you go ahead and put um, your stuff into the molds doing the hot process a lot of time you can have chunky soap and it can be really clumpy but adding the sodium lactate gives it an ability to have a little bit more pourability also uh, when we put in our essential oils we're going to put that in at the very end some people will saponify it uh, at the very beginning and some people will uh, go ahead and put it in at the end uh, we want to make sure that we don't freeze up any of our soap making so in doing so uh, we're going to add that at the end which will also help with the pourability before it sets in most soap making processes, uh, you would actually mix your sodium hydroxide at the very beginning before everything melts and all that uh, so that it has the time to cool down. But since we're going to be doing the hot process and we want to speed up the saponification, we're not going to mix our lye and our water and sodium lactate until we actually get everything to the temperature that we want it at, at about 170 180 make sure that all of our fatty acids are completely melted into that so that we are ready to get cooking and we want to have our, our sodium hydroxide or our lye uh, be as hot as possible and sometimes this can get up to you know 180 190 degrees and the great thing about that is going to speed up the saponification and help us get a quicker hot process soap so now this is almost melted, but we want to make sure that the biodiesel glycerin is completely melted before we add our fatty acids. Some people would add that at the beginning, but the reason we don't want to is because we want to make this process as simple as possible, whether it's for you or for us, uh, because if this is completely hot and melted, it will actually quickly dissolve the fatty acids as opposed to making it really hard to stir if all of them are solid and then you're trying to melt them all together. So we like to make it as quick and as easy as possible. Okay, so you see our uh, temperature right now is at about 230, and like I said, you need to constantly watch this as you're cooking it. Uh, our stuff is not completely melted yet, so that's fine, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn it down to maybe about uh, uh, maybe a 7 or 8, like a medium high, And because remember, we want to go ahead and maintain this temperature at 170 to 180 degrees. Now this biodiesel glycerin has already had the methanol uh, distilled and taken out of it. Uh, if you did not have the methanol distilled and taken out, uh, you would want to have this um, in a very well ventilated area, hopefully outside if all possible, and you can actually boil off the methanol. Now a lot of people are going to say that's not ecologically friendly, but if there's no other way to do it, then you know you might have to do that. Uh, but you can actually boil it off. Uh, anywhere from 180 to um, 200 degrees and do that anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and it should uh, boil it all off because methanol has a uh, much lower boiling point than the biodiesel glycerin does. So our biodiesel glycerin is completely melted uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add our fatty acids which is the stearic acid and the moristic acid Alright, and then we're just going to stir them in. We're going to make sure that they are completely 100% dissolved. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to stir it in and allow it to dissolve for a couple minutes while we make our lye water solution with our sodium lactate. We're going to go ahead and mix our sodium hydroxide or our lye now. Uh, we always want to make sure that we have long sleeves on. Uh, we also want to make sure that we have full protective gear, a uh, chemical respirator, uh, goggles that cover the complete eyes as well as 
um, chemical gloves. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I, I would definitely recommend it. I've been burned by lye twice. Uh, also, if you breathe in the fumes of the lye, uh, it can actually eat away your lungs and it can also make you blind. So you can do what you want, uh, but we definitely suggest using this, especially if you have the volcano effect come up and attack you. Uh, so you want to make sure that everything is uh, measured. We have a pail that is specifically for our lye, whether it's sodium hydroxide or our potassium hydroxide, and uh, we don't use this for anything else. We've already put in our 16 ounces of water inside, and uh, then we um, teared out our scale. And what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, 6.74 ounces. So we're going to go ahead and put in our sodium hydroxide and get in our full chemical gear. You may not be able to hear me clearly when I'm doing this with the respirator on. So basically what you're going to want to do is add your lye uh, slowly and steadily. Make sure you mix it consistently with the stick blender. And then when we put it inside the biodiesel glycerin mixture, you're also going to want to make sure that you do it slowly and steadily while constantly mixing. You're going to want to go ahead and mix it until it comes back to a clear. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, slowly add our lye. We're sitting at about 185 right now. And we're going to mix it in consistently while we do it. See right now, it's changing in it's changing in consistency and starting to go into the mashed potato stage. constantly in there right now and as you see it's starting to go into the pudding stage all right we're almost there we're almost to the Vaseline stage See how it's kind of shiny on top? So now would be a good time to go ahead and test the pH. And right about now we're also going to add our super fatting, uh, which is going to be our shea butter and our coconut oil, which is also going to help with the pourability. We're going to do some scenting. And so our loaves are 48 ounces. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put 48 ounces in here. All right, we're going to go ahead and do a rosemary mixture. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put 48 ounces here in this bowl. What we're going to do is go ahead and add our oils in there. And we're going to mix it in real good. And this is also going to aid in the pourability. and mold it up. It's starting to harden on top. So what we want to do is we've got some fresh rosemary. 
from the Renewable Republic. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put that on top, sprinkle it around the top, and then we're going to push it in. And this is fresh dried rosemary from the Urban Farm at the Renewable Republic. All right, the next one is going to be a sage. We're going to go ahead and pour it into our mold. Okay, once again, you want to go ahead and push that into the edges. Okay, and this stuff almost instantly starts firming up. So what you got to do before you put your herbs in is you got to break the surface. And this is also dried sage from the Renewable Republic. So what you want to do is you want to break the surface. Pat in your dried herbs so you make sure that they stick really well. Oh, and that just smells phenomenal. All right, so here we have the sage and we have the rosemary with uh, rosemary essential oil and then dry rosemary on top. And then we have the sage with the sage oil and the dried sage on top. And uh, we're going to let this go ahead and harden for 24 hours. We're going to go ahead and cut it tomorrow and we'll go ahead and show you that. When you're done making soap, make sure that you clean your area with vinegar. And what this is making sure that you do is neutralize any kind of lye that might have spilt on your work area so that uh, one day you're not just uh, messing around with it or your kids or your animals are messing around with it and you get a nice little lye burn. So. Make sure that you clean all your work surfaces with vinegar when you're done. I hate vinegar, but you know, this is going to make sure that you don't burn holes in your skin. So today we're going to be unmolding our two designer soap loafs. This is sage and it has uh, dried sage on top and sage essential oil inside the bar. So we're going to go ahead and pull it out of the silicone mold. And the great thing that we love about the silicone molds is it very easily pulls out. All right. So we have our loaf here. Okay, and whenever you are cutting your loaf, you always want to make sure that you put the dried leaves on the bottom. And then you always want to make sure that you clean off your wire. Make sure it's tight before you cut. All right, we have our one inch bars here. So that looks really nice. It's got the sage on top. Mmm, it smells wonderful. You can smell the sage. Subscribe now to get all our new green content first. Also, check out how to make biodiesel large scale, how to do biodiesel glycerin methanol distillation, or check out our green living playlist for all of the green living stuff that we enjoy.